the first conversation we had, which I think was still in October or yeah, yeah, could, yeah, yeah, could be, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Somewhere in that direction when we were still um, starting up Start Bootcamp Sustainability. And I think you were one of the one of our the first people that we talked that we were that we were linked. And, and, and I thought it was very nice. We, we, we ent went straight into the content discussion, right, on energy and so on. Right. And you've been so, so great and such a great partner. Um, and, but, but also it was your, let's say, your expertise together with the concept of early stage that was really, uh, in my, my view, at least an interesting match. So uh, if I might ask what, once you were introduced to start a boot camp and what we do with the startups and uh, engage with the startups, what made you tick? What made you actually become a partner uh, of start a boot camp? Well, I was really fascinated by your idea. Uh, well, because it's a fund, and normally for let's say a, a fund that's gonna well invest in startups and maybe not money but time and you're going to select startups. In that sense, it functions like a venture capital fund. Well, venture capital usually don't, uh, is not, are not focused on early stage. And, and that early stage is the, is the stage that I find personally most interesting because I have the idea that I can still sort of have a bit of an impact, you know, to, to assist the, the, the teams a little bit here and there. So, um, uh, so that's, that's interesting to have a fund that's focused on, on, on early stage. Firstly, uh, and to also uh, do it in, in a period of, of three years, so that's 10 per, per year, and invest really uh, in helping the, the teams to sort of to, to, yeah, to become more professional about it. So there's a lot of people with good ideas and sometimes good technology from the universities, but they really don't know almost where to start. It's a bit like how I was when I left university. But, but now there's incubators like, like, like Startup Bootcamp that can really add value to, to the professionalism and, 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 and help surviving the survival chances of these startups. So that, that's the second uh, thing. So in, in fact, it, and you have a deal flow, which is sort of way beyond what, what I have as an individual sort of business angel kind of private investor. Like I can only scout so much, uh, you know, and I can only sort of evaluate so many pitch decks per, per week, so to say, or per, per month. And, and here you have like a whole team that, that, that does the scouting. You, you show me the database that you have that you should accumulate information from startups all over the world all the time. And, and, you, and that's a fantastic tool. And the fact that you have a kind of people that do sort of nothing else than that, than that is, yes. is very powerful. So, so I, as, an, as, as a private investor, suddenly have access to like 30 startups that I probably would not have, not have found in any other way. And so I, by, fun, uh, by uh, sponsoring or, or, or investing in your fund, I, I become a little bit part of all these 30. So that's a good idea that in one go, with one sum, with one decision, 30 startups. As a diversification as yeah, well, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So diversification, exactly. And also, uh, I hope, because I'm also based in the Netherlands, that I, I can be, play a role a little bit in the mentoring part so I can get to know those startups in the Netherlands uh, you know, by visiting them, which would n never be possible if they were only located on a very far place. So, and, and the third thing that what I found very interesting is that you are floating it on the N exchange. So it, yeah. the whole fund becomes tradable. So I if I really like it, I, so I'm investing now 150,000 in, in let's say the, the first in installment, but if other people want to sell their shares, let's say after one year or two years, I can buy additional shares. Yeah. If, I, if I like what I see, exactly. you know, everything goes well, I have the opportunity to, to buy additional shares over time. So those three elements are really innovative and really attractive for me as a private investor. Uh, that's good to hear, Piotr, because for us, if we put our investor glasses on, our, we, what we want to do is to uh, democratize early stage. Right? Right. Early stage is still, still a, a black box uh, in many ways, uh, and, but it's so powerful because if you unlock early, early stage, if you unlock this, this space in which startups can try and where is the technology like your your example yourself right uh, having the experience as a gamer and then seeing the technology becoming better and then seeing the need of the business and then acting fast right if we can unlock a system of support to help early stage go then later stage becomes easier and and then the whole innovation 
economy starts to, to flourish. Right. Um, and for us, again, if we put our, our, our investor glasses on to, to hear this from you, it's amazing because that's literally what we aim for, the, the diversification, the de-stressing, making the process easier for investor and startup. And of course, since recently, the, 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 the possibility of liquidity, the possibility of trading, which in normal, let's say, early stage investment is just... Never like, happens. No, exactly. no, never happens. So great to, uh, great to hear about that. I'm, I'm also curious about... Uh, something very specific because you mentioned you, you're an, an, an industry expert and 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 one of course of the of the hottest topics now uh, in, in innovation in, in, in general is blockchain and bitcoin and cryptos and so on and and, and 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 of course it's hot also because there's all the people trading and valuations are through the roof but i also know and this is something we, we're seeing more and more in the research within early stage the huge impact that crypto and Bitcoin and so on have in, in, in energy consumption. Right. And it's something that most probably seems not to seem that, that is not going to slow down. But that for sustainability, it's, a, it's, it's, it's huge, right? How can we make this process right. more sustainable? Can we make this process more sustainable? Uh, it, it's a bit of a side note, but I would like to really get your, your feedback if you're open yeah. for it. So I knew already from years ago that Bitcoin to generate bitcoins creates a lot of uses a lot of energy electricity and also the transactions each transaction I, I i read about it recently more into the details each bitcoin transaction because the blockchain mechanism that involves all the sort of supported uh, comp uh, uh, pcs uh, each block uh, blockchain transaction uh, takes uh, like 300 kilos of, of co2 it blows 300 kilos of CO2 for one transaction. That's, that's unbelievable. And, and so the initially, of course, uh, the founders or the initiators of, of uh, Bitcoin uh, about 12 years ago, they, they didn't realize this probably, they didn't think about it. They just invented a, a fantastic new digital currency, cryptocurrency that was independent of the governments, independent of the countries, independent of the big banks. So it was really like, the techies, you know, coming up with yet another disruption, which which I found, you know, really great at the time. I, I like disruption. I like uh, technology and the impact it can have. But then later, it became clear. Well, there's a, there's some side effects here of this new technology, especially if you scale it up. So it works fine on a small scale. But the more bitcoins you you harvest or mine, the more energy it costs to create another one. First of all, and secondly, the more PCs that are sort of part of this whole blockchain uh, and, uh, blockchain process, uh, the, the more it takes time it takes and the more energy it takes to, to process such a transaction. So it's actually not very usable as a replacement of, let's say, bank transactions of what you do with your normal bank card or your mobile phone with your bank or with Visa. So now there's, uh, if you calculate it, I read a, a report about a guy that does nothing else than investigating all these things. So that uh, one transaction of Bitcoin at the 300 kilos or 300 plus kilos, uh, one transaction, if you compare it to a Visa transaction, it takes 730,000 times as much oh, energy wow. for one Bitcoin transaction. It's like, okay, so it's not usable as a transaction yeah. tool, uh, as a replacement of normal currencies in the normal way of working. So what is it then? Then it comes down to speculation. I mean, Bitcoin is now used, mostly used by speculators, yeah. and people who buy it or, or, or mine it on their own PC, like gold diggers. And I can see the fascination, especially young guys, you have a PC, you like technology, you can mine Bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies yeah. on your own PC. But the side effects, especially when you scale them up, that for me was a reason never to invest in Bitcoin. I think, okay, well, great, but there's other great technologies that I can invest in and that are much more sustainable and have much more impact. So I was, I would like to say to all the people you know, involved in investing and money, it's like think twice before you invest in, 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 in Bitcoin and, and other cryptocurrencies that take a lot of energy. There are cryptocurrencies that take less energy that came up later you know, to address these points, but still, there's a much better way to invest your money, which is impact investment yeah. in, in, in something that, that is meaningful to the world, that has much more Im that positive impact in creating a better world than just this, this Bitcoin 
uh, yeah, financial benefits of, of, of just seeing or the thing going up or down in price over time. Which is not only for the return, right? Is uh, because, it, like you said, speculation, investment, not only for the return but also for the positive impact. Yeah, and that is is crucial. And it's interesting because Bitcoin consumes an immense amount of energy. I also read a report. Uh, maybe I might be wrong, but I read a report that cloud, just cloud technology, um, consumes almost as much energy as the whole United Kingdom put together. Yeah, that, that no, indeed, but that's supporting a lot of services absolute, no, and, absolute. and businesses that people really enjoy. I mean, me watching at home on, on a, like a Netflix, something like that. I like watching Netflix and yes, that's run from the cloud and it takes also energy, but at least no, but, but my I'm point, enjoying it. Yeah, no, but my point is more uh, on the cloud and Bitcoin and so on. It's more, do you think that the, the energy industry is being agile enough, is adapting itself enough as a whole to all these new, let's say, adjacent technologies that are coming in and pulling in a lot of resource, pulling in a lot of consumption, right? Of course, Bitcoin is a whole, a crypto in itself is a whole conversation, but cloud and everything else that is really disrupting from the outside in, yeah. uh, how do you think they are, uh, the, the industry as, as, a, as a whole is adapting? Well, that is indeed driving up the whole sort of global demand for energy. Yeah. So uh, apart from changing over, from the, the bad, let's say the, the, the bad energy, the oil-based, coal-based coal energy, uh, that needs to transition to sort of clean electricity. But in addition, there's these new users yeah. of, of energy, uh, especially electricity, and that all adds up to the whole sort of requirement uh, sort of level of energy. So you need to build even more wind farms and solar parks and, and uh, you know, all these kind of things. So for me, I hope, I hope still that nuclear fusion will happen, uh, not in 30 years, but maybe in, in, in 15 years. I'm investing even in a, in a nuclear fusion startup now, yeah, yeah. which is really exciting. Eh? You see now the, the big sort of research, uh, research focusing on, on nuclear fusion, but also in addition, you see startups coming up already since like 20 years. They, they, they start to crack the problem of nuclear fusion on a much smaller scale with investors like myself or, or bigger corporate investors. And, so, and one of these sort of smaller uh, uh, companies might crack it in, let's say, 10 years time. And then there's a, there's a whole new opportunity, new option for energy creation in a clean way, which is nuclear fusion. And of course, it takes quite a while before, you know, when the first sort of yeah. small pilot plant is built and then before it can take over a big portion of, of global electricity production. That's another 20 years. But at least it's, I think it's coming. I still think it's coming. Uh, it's closer than it was when I was at high school. Uh, I, I see why, you know, what improvements are made that make it now possible that did, were not available back then. So it could very well be in like 20 years time, there will be another energy transition where we maybe take away some of the windmills again because the end of the lifetime, they don't need to be replaced by new ones. Yeah, they only sort of live for 25 years and then they're going to be replaced with nuclear fusion, small nuclear fusion power generation uh, plants. Uh, that, that's uh, sort of my hope for the future of, let's say, humanity uh, to cope with the, uh, all the el electricity demand that yeah. you will see coming up over the, yeah. over the coming decades. Oh, that's so interesting. Uh, Piotr, before we uh, wrap up, I want to ask you something uh, a bit more ad hoc, um, an advice for startups and an advice for peer, peers, inv other investors, Be because we have a big community that watches the our fireside, fireside chats, um, and they can benefit from uh, so from 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 your wisdom. So, if you have one advice for the, in the investors watching it, and one advice for the startups watching this, yeah, for the startups. It's, it's um, my advice is to sort of, mm, to prepare yourself. Um, so it's good, to, of, of course, you need to have a vision, you need to have a, a clear uh, idea, an improvement, a, a product that you have in mind that you think that you see that, that other people don't see, yeah, because you need to have like some kind of a strategic advantage over them. But it, don't sort of jump, in, jump into it too easily without preparation. I think there's a lot you can do and that starts with reading books. There's very good 
books now, also by a Dutch uh, Dutch author about author about uh, you know he he did it several times, uh, starting up companies and then investing in companies, and he's read a, a book. Uh, it's, a start, it's in Dutch, uh, so it's more for the Dutch startup. But there's similar books. Read yourself into the topic because it goes through phases, very yes. chapters, uh, and each phase requires certain items to be in place, yes. certain things to be addressed. Uh, so if you can learn by doing completely yourself, uh, not reading any books, because a lot of founders don't like reading books. But, but, but my advice is prepare yourself. It doesn't take too much time and it can help you so much to benefit from all the experience from some other other founders, other entrepreneurs, other investors that's contained in such a such a book. So um, yeah, it can help yourself to prepare. Uh, so prepare really well also for for uh, to get your story right, to hire additional people, to ha to find other founders if you if you're just by yourself. Uh, you need to get your story right. You need to get some answers to the questions. Uh, and eventually, of course, to, to also to investors. So that's it's a combination of, let's say, passion and, and creative ideas, but supplemented with solid homework. Yeah, because not and, and just to complement on what you're saying, we see that a lot of founders they, they are great in technology or they are great in. Um, people or they are passionate about a specific problem but uh, building a company it's it's the venture building process right which is deploying the technology into the into market yeah. and that has a whole uh, it's a whole universe in itself right so it's very absolutely nice what you're, yeah, what you're yeah, saying yeah. and for the investors for your peer investors right yeah absolutely for me of course the same is true I, I, I read, like I said, all the time, reports, books. I just need to be, I, I feel I need to be prepared. Every conversation, every startup I talk to, I first read the pitch deck, I follow the profiles on LinkedIn from the founders, I see what they did in the past. I prepare myself for every, even like a video meeting, like a Zoom meeting, every meeting I, I'm well prepared so we can sort of not uh, spend too much time on all the, on the obvious things and focus on the interesting things. I think that's really yeah. the needle. Fantastic. Piotr, I thank you very much for taking the time. I learned a lot. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. If you are interested in, in, in getting to know Piotr more, we'll, we'll tag him in the description of this video in, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. If you are interested in partnering up with Startup Bootcamp Sustainability, either as an investor or applying as a, as a startup, you can also find the links in the description of these videos. I thank you guys very much for watching and staying with us. I thank you, Piotr, again, for taking the time to You're be welcome. with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. And just to remind everyone, our IPO for Startup Bootcamp Sustainability will, is live until the 4th of June and the program will start in August. If you want more, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, or drop me, Cohen Bonovac, Managing Director, a message via LinkedIn, and I'll be in touch with all of you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.